All right, when I switch gears, uh, I told you a couple of issues we have to delve on, uh, deal, deal with today, and one of which is the issue of that livestock development ministry that the president pronounced yesterday. We had a conversation with uh, policy experts yesterday, uh, but today I want to talk to the people in the academia uh, who have uh, understanding of how this thing play out as well. Professor Olaini, Olani Yirada Babayemi, uh, professor of animal sciences, University of Ibadan, joins us via Zoom. Prof, thank you so much for coming on the program and for your patience. Uh, and thank you very much. It's a pleasure having me. Okay, Prof, uh, I, as an academic and somebody who has uh, done a lot of work in this direction, um, the first natural question I will ask you is your first reaction to this announcement by the president of just over 24 hours ago, um, whether or not uh, the livestock ministry, livestock subsector of the agricultural sector, uh, is big enough to be elevated to the status of a ministry? Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I think the, uh, the, the announcement did not come to us as a surprise. Uh, it's long expected. Uh, because when you talk of agriculture, it is not only crop that we can call agriculture. Agriculture consists of crop and animal science or livestock production. And if you take um, a crop science or crop production as an example, it, it, we can say that it's already developed. It developed indeed. There are examples that we can show that crop is already developed. Because if you look at some of the institutes that we have in Nigeria, we have cream, that is a Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria that takes care of cocoa, cashew, coffee, and other crops like that. You have a Nihot. Nihot is in charge of oil palm. There is um, um, a Nihot, Nifo. Nifo is in charge of um, uh, oil palm. Nihot, that is Nigerian Institute for Horticulture and Research. And then there is Frim. Forest Research Institute of Nigeria. There is also what we call RIN, R R I N. That is Research, um, Rubber Research Institute of Nigeria in Benin. And then, of course, the father of them all is IITA. IITA is basically in charge of arable crops, particularly cassava and uh, soya bean and cowpea, and up north, this, uh, there is this um, institute that we call the ICRAT, International um, Institute of Crop Research for, um, uh, for, 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 for Dry Land uh, and the Tropics. You will see that all these are in existence for crop production, but for livestock production, there is none like that, except the one we have in NAPRI. That is the National Animal Production Research Institute. That is the only institute that livestock can point to in Nigeria. And of course, you will see that crops are well developed because we have all these institutes, research institutes that are taking care of them. But for livestock production, the only institute we have is NAPRI. And that is why I said that it's not coming to us as a surprise, because it's an opportunity to develop livestock. The name of the ministry is Livestock Development. Development means that there is something maybe under, underdeveloped, but there is a need to develop it. And that is why it is being named Livestock development. And that development is going to do a lot. Although people say, people quote the president that the ministry is established in order to settle the rift or the rancor or the problem, the challenges between crop farmers and the, and the herders. No, it goes beyond that. Although on the long run, it's going to settle that, but that is not the main issue. There are other issues, as I have said, that that particular ministry will settle. And among them is what I've told you, that there will be need 
to develop livestock. And in developing that, for example, the NAPRI that I mentioned, it's only NAPRI that takes care of poultry, takes care of dairy, takes care of small ruminants, all right. and all kinds of livestock. No, livestock cannot develop in that sense. All right, Prof. When you look at the word livestock in that sense, there are a few highlights to so the layman, which is why you, we brought you the academic to help us dig deeper and have a better understanding so that we can have a better frame of reference to this particular issue. There are a few highlights. If as much as time will allow us, let's unpack them one after the other. You've mentioned one, which is the resolution, this protracted resolution that we're looking for when it comes to a head of farmer crisis. How do you see this resolving that, whether in the short term or in the long run? Uh, well, in, 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 the, in the short term, well, let me take that of a long run. Um, Rome is not built in a day. Development has to be gradual. For example, how can this ministry solve or resolve the rancor between uh, the herders and the crop farmers. For example, in some developed countries, they have gone beyond extensive system. There are three systems of livestock production. We have extensive system, semi-intensive system, and intensive system. Presently in Nigeria, we are still practicing extensive system. But with this livestock development as a ministry, we go beyond extensive system. Because if you want intensive system, a system whereby you want the animals to be confined to a particular place, maybe to your home, to your garden, or, 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 or to your farm, there must be provision for food. For example, cattle. An average cattle will consume about 42 kilograms of, of grass per day. You can imagine where such 42 kilograms will be obtained. So for us to actually, uh, actually cage or restrict movement of animals, there must be provision for food. So what will happen is that by the time the ministry starts, number one, there will be session for, 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 for production of, uh, of food, that is animal nutrition. There will be a session for breeding of animals. Let me tell you, we don't have high quality animals in Nigeria. For example, in Botswana, an animal can do, a, a farmer can just keep about 10 animals. That 10 animals in Botswana is equivalent to about 50 animals in Nigeria in terms of size. And then when you have such high fed animals, there is no reasonable farmer, reasonable livestock owner that will begin to drive such animals from one location to another. Definitely, the, the farmer will restrict the animal to where they are supposed to be with good feed, good diet for the animals. So, on the long run, when uh, our, our, our livestock are improved, maybe through introduction, through selection, and through breeding, we have high-quality animals right. that nobody will like to take to the bush but to be confined in the place for rearing and for good production. All right, Prof, I know you've mentioned the issue of ranching, which also brings the, the argument that I put up yesterday, uh, that some people have put up as well, uh, when you read the thoughts of a lot of people about federal government getting involved in interventions like this, given the paucity of funds that we have, where we are indebted. And people are talking about um, over bloating the system that is already over bloated or extensively over bloating it, given the fact that there's a new ministry. So how are we going to separate the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security from the Ministry of Livestock Development? Well, uh, whether Ministry of um, uh, Food Security, uh, Ministry of, uh, of, of Livestock Development is towards a particular aim. And the aim is to put food on the table that average Nigerian can afford. So that is the aim. Now, you can uh, actually use one stone to kill two birds. And the bird that we are killing 
is the hunger, is to put food on the table. So the Ministry of, um, of, 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 of Food Security and the Ministry of Livestock, they, 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 have, uh, they have different, it's like unity in diversity. They have their role to play. We have uh, our own role to play, but to go and meet somewhere to put food on the table. Livestock is livestock. Crop is crop. They have different orientation, different production, different system, and a different technology that can be applied on them. Somebody who is the minister of a crop, who is the minister of agriculture, maybe by the virtue of, um, of being involved in production of crops, now want to oversee that of livestock. The question is, I'm very sorry, with all sense of humility, what does he know about livestock, about poultry, about cattle, about, um, about, about swine, about pig, about rabbit, about grass cutter, about snail, and all that, and all that, about sheep and goat. So if you will have these different ministry, ministries, they will have a focus, they will have a goal that they will achieve at the end, at the end of the day. And that is why I feel that it's a welcome development that we have livestock uh, the development as a ministry in Nigeria. All right, Prof, in, in winding down, I remember former President Olusegun Basin just saying that um, Africa must stop looking at agriculture generally as uh, uh, more like a charity case for meeting the needs of the poor. It should be looked at as a business. So. Let's elevate the conversation to the issue of this livestock business. What, in terms of revenue, should we be expecting, given this attention that is going to be uh, given to that particular subsector in the ecosystem? That's a very good question. As I said, if you look at our animals, honestly speaking, do we have dairy cattle in Nigeria? No. In other, in other, in other clients, that is a very big source of income for them. Dairy, our dairy animal in Nigeria is like a river without water. It's like a deep well without water. That is what we can call our dairy animal in Nigeria. Our animals in Nigeria, the highest they can produce is about three liters a day. Whereas in other places, even in some African countries, some of them produce about 20 liters, 25 liters, even 30 liters of milk per day. You can imagine if you have about 2,000, 3,000, even about 5,000 dairy animals in Nigeria, what a big income, what a big economy will it be for Nigeria? And that is just from aspect of dairy only. Beef animal, poultry, you no know, pig, you know, a micro livestock, and all that, and all that, when they, are, when, when they are engaged, and they are engaged in a proper way, in a good way, in a modern way of right. practicing livestock production, I'm telling you, there will be a great and great income for the country, revenue for individuals and revenue for the country. Prof. Must thank you. This conversation, um, there's an intersection between science and politics and all whatnot. So we brought you to talk about exclusively around the sciences of this. Must thank you, Professor Lani Babayemi. The professor of Animal Sciences, University of Ibadan. Thank you, sir, for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me. And that's it on this edition of the program. Thank you so much for your time and company. I'm Jeffrey Ozama. Good night.